Greetings, welcome back to another XITech What's New in Inventor 2018 video. This time we're looking at iLogic improvements that have been added. So here's a nice simple one, but very convenient first. We now have the ability to switch between multiple browsers um, simply by clicking on these tabs in your Inventor window. That would include a Vault tab if you've got Vault 2018 installed as well, and you don't necessarily have to have them in separate windows. Uh, we'll see this when we switch into Inventor in a minute. Let's look at the next improvement that's been added. We now have size limits for iLogic forms and controls. So for either the top level form or for individual controls such as parameters or rules within the form, you now have this size limits property. You can capture the current size and you can specify a minimum and a maximum to add a bit more of a professional appearance to your iLogic forms. Let's switch into Inventor and I'll show you both of these things we've just mentioned. So here we have the ability to switch between the new tabs. If you've got the iLogic browser off separately, you can of course dock it on its own on the right, for instance, but if I choose to dock it here into the uh, existing model browser, that's a really nice convenient way to switch between my ways of viewing the model. And now the, uh, the size limits that I mentioned, if I edit this existing form that's in here, we'll see this is the form as it currently stands. And these are the new options for size limits. Let me show you how this form currently works and we'll see what in the improvement is that's been made. So if I resize this form, we can see the L1 and L2 measurements resize uh, as the form goes, but there's no limits, so I can make the form too small or too big. What if I want to say this is the minimum size of the form and that's the maximum, and to keep these L1 and L2 the same size? Let's just see how we do that. So if I set the form to be the size that I want the minimum to be, and then if I right click and say edit on the form, I will then choose the form up here and I'll say size limits, hit the browse button, and say capture for the minimum and say OK and then say and then resize to the maximum size that I want the user to be able to specify such as this size and then go back into the limits and say capture the maximum okay so now I've captured the minimum and the maximum if I go back into the form I can now only size between those particular sizes very useful if I want to do a similar thing for controls within the form I can do that as well. So if I want, for instance, the L1 and L2 to stay the same size the whole time, to stay at this minimum size, for instance, and I can edit the form, find L1 and L2. Unfortunately, I still have to do these as separate operations, but if I hit the size limits and capture the minimum and the maximum at the same time and say OK, and then do the same for um, well, in fact, if I just leave L2, L1 won't resize and L2 will resize. And let's just check that out. And now, there we are. So we can see L2 is taking up the slack there and L1 staying the same size. So it can be a nice, uh, flexible way of organizing your iLogic forms, add a bit of professionalism there. Let's head back to our um, PowerPoint. And the last improvement is the iLogic security options. So this is accessed either from the iLogic configuration button uh, if you've closed all your inventor files in this drop down under options or from the event triggers dialog. I'll show you in a second. And it allows auto checking for potentially malicious code that you may have downloaded. Of course, not from an Excitec blog, maybe from somewhere else. Someone trying to launch um, spurious programs on your computer or launch some virus code of some kind it will check for instance if you've got any this doc launch or I think any process start statements to launch external programs of any kind it will prompt you when you start these uh, when this rule is run or uh, that it's potentially malicious and you can either stop it or you can choose to run it anyway and you can also choose to disable all event triggers so this it's not necessarily even a security option if you don't want it to be. It can just be a way of turning off all the event triggers as on an application level um, using this all events disabled option. Let me just show you how this works in Inventor. So if I go to my uh, event triggers, you see I've got security options here. So I can disable all events 
or I can only disable after open events. And this is something that's going to run the minute you open a document, it might, um, you know, export something or change a setting. If you want to prevent that and to only make those changes manually, not after open a document, you can switch to this setting. And this is the option I mentioned to inspect for malicious code. What kind of thing are we considering malicious code, I wonder? Well, if I go in here, if I add a rule, if I say process dot start and then start something in my C drive. There we are. I'm starting another process. So when I choose to run that rule, despite the fact this text file doesn't exist, it's saying potentially you've got some harmful code in here. Um, I can choose not to run it or to run it. If I say um, if I say run the rule, then it gives me other options to uh, to assume for future that all rules in this file are safe, or I can change my general security options later on. Okay, but there's a lot of iLogic code you'll be using that does not start external processes or do anything that might be malicious, so you won't get these warnings for that kind of code. Okay, hope you find this very helpful. See you next time.